Hello everyone, this is James from ShackletonArts.com and in this tutorial we will be covering how to create a Shepherd Fairy style propaganda poster using Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. This tutorial will be mostly covering the Photoshop work we will be doing with taking our model, removing the background, and then doing all of the styles to it. So let's go ahead and get started. Using a high resolution picture is extremely recommended, recommended for this. So first thing I usually do is use the quick select tool. I actually duplicate the layer and turn off my background layer just in case I mess anything up I can get back to my original image. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with uh, selecting the image. You can use the bracket keys to increase the size of your brush and by holding the option key in Mac or Alt in PC you can just go ahead and unselect anything you didn't want to select. You don't have to be super precise at this point. here a little bit. And we have a pretty decent selection here. So next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and come up here and hit refine edge. And we're going to go ahead and just check show radius, check smart radius, and then we're going to increase this just a bit until we get a pretty nice size radius. This is where it's going to uh, fix the hair a little bit and smooth out a bit of the outline. I think that's a pretty good size. It'll uh, vary based off of your image. So next what we're going to go ahead and do is increase the smooth a bit, bring back the shift edge, and increase contrast. You'll have to play around with these settings to get everything to your liking. This is pretty fine. Uh, we're going to be able to, we're going to fix a lot of this like with the hand and the, the wrist here. And the last thing is on the output. We're going to go ahead and select new layer with layer mask and hit OK on that. All right. So if we come to our layer mask, uh, we can actually use a regular brush and we can, by painting black, we can get rid of stuff. And if we press X to switch to our white, make sure you have these selected to the default, you can bring it back in. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in a majority of what's around her hand here and zoom in. This is why working with a higher resolution picture is recommended for this. This can be a little bit tedious, but it doesn't have to be completely perfect, just close. So I'm a perfectionist, so I want it to be perfect. look it's pretty good okay so now that we're done with the selection there we're gonna go ahead and I want to remove the uh, old navy here on her shirt so we're actually gonna be converting this to black and white so I'm actually gonna duplicate this layer just so I have a copy of the mask so I don't have to redo all that in case anything messes up and I'm gonna do a control shift U and that'll make it black and white and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the clone stamp and do a little bit of work getting rid of the old navy. Just do a like, line like that. And all this little like you can see how the texture sort of repeats there it's gonna be completely fine once we actually get all the effects going so next what we're gonna go ahead and do is do image adjustments and actually no we're going to go filter blur and we're gonna add a Gaussian blur and this will vary based off of the resolution that you're working with and everything like that with a pretty high resolution I usually use four 
Then we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, and Posterize. And for this, you can use three or four, depending on which one looks better. I think three looks better for this one, but sometimes four will look better. Maybe even five, I would say, is the limit, but I'm going to go ahead and use three. All right, so looking uh, pretty good. We have basically achieved the effect we're looking for, except we don't have the color now. So the easiest way to select the color is actually going to go Select Color Range. And you can either sample the color, like this, so we can get the blacks and the lights. Or we could just go to Shadows, go ahead and select it. Then we're going to do a Control c or Command-C in Mac, and Control-V, again, Command-V in Mac. And that'll grab the shadows. Do a Control-L uh, to bring up the levels. And we're going to go ahead and drag this all the way down so it's 0, 0. And that's just going to make sure all the shadows are completely black. All right. I'm actually going to take this layer mask here and apply it to the layer by just right clicking. OK, next is we want to select the midtones. So we want to leave the black black. The next one is actually going to be our color. So we're going to go ahead and do a select color range and midtones. Then control C, control V again, and we'll have that uh, as a separate layer. And then we're gonna go ahead and do our levels again and change this to about 170, 175, around there. Then we're gonna go ahead and I normally go with doing image adjustments variations for changing the color on it. But if this is not an option for you, I know it's not available in some versions of uh, older versions of Photoshop. I believe it's not available in 64-bit for CS5 and CS4. Uh, you can go ahead and select the, just change the color manually. You will lose a bit of detail because this actually will get the, keep the detail. If you have any other ways of doing it, then I would change the color that way. But filling it is going to lose detail. So this one we want to be red. So we're going to go ahead and grab a bit of red, darken it a bit. More red. And a bit darker there. And maybe we'll add more yellow to it just to change the color up a little bit. And make sure we bring coarse all, all this way as well. We have coarse and darker. Perfect. This one's great right here. Maybe add a little more red and darken it. That's good. Hit OK. And there we go. With this one, you can't really see the extra detail that it saves, but in the long run, you will get that detail. And last is the highlights, which we actually don't even need to select. We have this layer right here. So we can go ahead and just control or oops, control L and change this to about 215, 220. And that'll make that whole thing a nice light gray. So I guess for this one we can just change the color ourselves. Want sort of a beige-ish color. That's really good right there. If you can control click the actual image on the layer, it'll select everything, and then we can just do an alt backspace, and that'll put that in there. So now we've achieved this effect. Um, we can go ahead and save this as a PNG so we keep the background transparent and then bring this into Illustrator. I recommend doing a little bit of cleanup before actually importing it to Illustrator. We'll go ahead and merge these layers together and uh, grab the eraser and just get little spots like this that were extra. Sometimes like you'll have little lines like this that we probably don't want. I want to feather the eraser because there's a bit of feathering here, so I don't want to mess any of that up. And then we can probably just paint that back in. It's not too big of a deal. As you can see, it looks pretty good. So now we're going to go ahead and in the next tutorial, we'll take this into Illustrator and finish it up there.